right. So basically, I think uh, Luke definitively proved that 4K is just not really a big deal in your timeline. I think Bryce showed that acquiring 4K is not really a big deal. What I'm going to talk to you about is, um, I think, some barriers that a lot of people face when it comes to actually getting all of this footage, whether it be 4K, 1080, et cetera, into an editable state where they can actually start working with it and find something. Yeah. And really, I think the truth of the matter is, at the end of the day, um, no one really cares how hard you worked on your edit. All they care about is what's on the screen. That means that as an editor, the only thing that should matter to you is what you do in your timeline and telling the story in the best way possible so that your audience actually enjoys what they're watching. And then it's mission accomplished. Unfortunately, I think in a lot of cases, it's really hard for the editor actually just to get down to work. In many traditional workflows, it can take up to three days from when your footage is shot to when you actually get to make your first edit in a timeline. And in a typical workflow, if you're lucky, you're going to have a DIT on set who's going to copy your footage to the drive. This is then going to get sent back to a lab or transcoded overnight at which point the next day the assistant editor is going to come in and if it hasn't been turned into dailies, it's going to get sunk, renamed, organized, placed into a string out for the editor, at which point you'll get digital or printed copies of the script notes that are going to go into a binder and get placed on a desk in the editor's room and never be opened again. Once all of that happens and you get all of this stuff, um, you still can't find anything because it's like a needle in a haystack. Uh, with more and more footage being shot and more and more footage being sent in with more and more cameras and all of these different angles, at the end of the day it becomes information overload. So I think we need better tools in terms of being able to go and find the footage that's in our edit so we actually know what it is we're dealing with and we don't just use the same five takes because that's what we had time to watch. What's interesting about Final Cut 10 is there's not really anything new. There's no new magic necessarily in terms of the technology that's in there. They're taking two things that we use every day, which are basically the internet search bar and a spreadsheet, and they're kind of merging them together and putting them inside a nonlinear editor. It doesn't seem like it's revolutionary, but people haven't really been working this way. Now it's much easier to find things. And the concept of metadata can allow you to do things like taking all of that work that used to require three days, and you can do it in 10 minutes, and I'm going to show you how. It's called Shot Notes 10 because this is a new app. And what it's going to basically allow you to do is have completely searchable script supervisors metadata, properly synced and renamed event. You're going to be able to do this within 10 minutes of downloading your footage. So let's just go ahead and get started. This is a full day's worth shot about a week and a half ago of 5K epic footage. All I really need to do to start this process is import my footage into Final Cut 10 and then export an XML. It's going to show up there. So now I have my Final Cut 10 XML imported. Here's the interesting thing about the way things can be done on set now. I have two folders that are identical here uh, in the CSV folder, which is basically just a tabbed file that you can create in an industry standard script supervisor application like Scripty. But the interesting thing is that you can also do this in Numbers or Excel. So I have a Numbers file here, which is a full day's worth of shooting that a script supervisor would be entering this data in anyway. So why not do it in a spreadsheet where this is going to be usable in your edit later on? So we have scene, take, clip name. We have a notes field with what happened during the take. Notes two is whether they're circle takes or not. Your script supervisor is on set. They're in charge of doing this information anyway. Let's put it in a spreadsheet. Notice we have 77 clips found and matched. So it's matched all the clips together. I'm going to save this modified XML into my XML folder. And now it's going to send it automatically into Final Cut 10 and put it in the library I've already created. And now when I open this up, not only do I have keywords based on all the different things that I've tagged, so I can go and search based on frame size and format, but also I can search based on who the director was. So in this case, Ambika was the director that we had for that day. If I go here, I can now search for things based on the notes field that's currently in here. So let me type in all the takes. I want to see all the takes that feature Samantha. And now we're down to that. But now I can drill down even further and add another text search. And now I can find all of my circle takes. And it's things like this where you can just go in and pop and just search and find things. This is a far more efficient way to do things than the typical way that I think we've all been working. Let's take that one step further. And let's bring in the 
XML that I created in Shot Notes X into Sync and Link X, which is a fantastic program from Intelligent Assistance, which basically is going to automatically sync your clips using second source audio and timecode. This is the altered XML created from Shot Notes 10. I'm going to open it up. It's going to go, it's going to find all of the clips, sync them. It's going to rename them based on the video metadata here. And now I'm going to sync the clips and save the XML just as I did before. And now it's going to send another event into my library, into the same library. I'm going to open this up. I'm going to come down to my sync folder. And now if I come down here, I'm going to select one of these clips. And as you can see, I now have connected audio to my storyline audio. I'm going to turn the storyline audio off here. Okay. And here we go. And as you can see, we're in sync. Now let's take this one step even further and select all of these clips and go into the info tab of the inspector and let's quickly rename them to an automatic metadata naming scheme in Final Cut 10, which is scene, shot, take, and angle, which are the three most commonly used things to name your clip. I'm just gonna hit this preset and immediately all of my clips are renamed based on scene, take, and angle. And that's all because of what I just did and I had a script supervisor on set filling out a spreadsheet. So what this really means is that if I come down here, this is a bunch of 6K Dragon footage. I can play this back in real time in Final Cut 10. What it means is that I can download pretty much any resolution and work with that directly on set in post and build a usable project. I can tell the director whether we missed something in coverage, etc. cetera. On set cuts can happen and then a fully synced, renamed, searchable event can be sent back to post so the assistant editor can do tasks that are actually going to be far more useful to the editor. For me, this is a far more efficient way of working. Shot Notes 10 is going to be available. We're really excited to bring it out here and see what you guys do with it. That's pretty much it. Thanks, guys.